thank you so much for joining me and welcome to my first class in this flute box basics masterclass series i really hope that this is going to be a fab introduction to you to the world of flute boxing which is a world that i absolutely love i'm by no means an expert but i think i've learned enough along the way to get you started in the basics so i hope you enjoy it so before we get started a little bit about me I've been interested in flute boxing for about five years now. Um, I first came across some extended techniques on the flute in a course that I attended and was fascinated by them, wanted to know more. And then I came across uh, flute beatboxing, which I just thought was amazing and incredible. And um, although it's taken me some time to find my feet with it, I just love doing it and I love teaching it as well. So before we start to learn about our first sound, Let's take a little bit of a look at the history of beatboxing. So beatboxing began in the 80s when drum machines were first invented. So these drum machines were made to imitate the sounds of the drum kit and also other electronic sounds. People soon began to realise that as well as using electronic means to imitate sounds, they could do so with their own human voices. And this became known as a human beatbox. You're probably familiar with different sounds being made on the flute from round about the 70s when players like Ian Anderson and Robert Dick started to experiment with extended techniques. From that, beatboxing grew and then came fluteboxing where players would put the beatboxing with these flute sounds. So, let's start to think about the sounds that we're going to explore in this Masterclass series. So we're going to stick with three of the basic sounds which come directly from the drum kit. Let's take a look at a kit so we know which sounds we're actually going to be imitating. So here is our standard drum kit and you'll see at the bottom is the biggest drum, the bass drum, which is otherwise known as the kick drum because it's always played by the player's foot using a pedal. It produces the biggest and loudest sound in the kit and is the most important sound that you can make with your beatbox because if you make it really strong then you're going to have a good foundation for any beat that you want to create. Okay so before we start to look more at our bass drum sound that we're going to explore today let's talk a little bit about warming up. So just as you'd warm up to play your flute I think it's a fabulous idea to warm up to practice beatboxing or beatboxing with your flute. This is because just like playing the flute it involves lots of different muscles and if those muscles are tense then they're not going to work in the way that we'd like. So here's a few ideas for warming up your muscles ready to beatbox. So the first thing that I like to do is to use my hands on the sides of my cheeks so that I can really start to relax all the muscles of the cheeks. So if you simply take your hands, take the palm of your hands and run them down your cheeks and as you do so try to let your jaw relax because it's these jaw muscles that can get really really tense from us walking around and talking all day. So if you take your hands, rub them down your cheeks and let that jaw relax. Another movement that's good to do with your hands to help relax your muscles is to use your thumbs and to pop them behind your ears. So if you put your thumbs at the base of your ears and then run them down your jaw, then you should be able to start to feel these muscles which again are probably really really tense. So give them a good rub right under the ear, right where the jaw hinges because it's that hinge that needs to be able to open really nice and wide so that we can make the most of our sounds. Another fun idea is to think about different shapes that you can make with your lips and your face. So things like popping, puffing up your cheeks will really help to relax these muscles, a little bit like a hamster. So hamster cheeks is a really good one to do. There's also um, imitating a rabbit. So if you lift up your cheeks here, then you're stretching all these muscles around the lips and at the top under the nose. 
And my favourite one is imagining you've got a fly on your nose. So if you imagine there's a fly there and you want to get rid of it by blowing, then you've got to extend your bottom lip over your top lip, which really helps to stretch all the muscles around the mouth, which you might have missed with the other exercises. So we might think about the face quite a lot, but we need to think about what's going on inside. And as a flute player in general, I think this is one of the biggest things that can make a massive difference to your sound, is exploring the spaces inside the mouth and the throat. When we beatbox, to be able to make a really good sound, thinking about the space that's created inside can be really important because we want different spaces for different sounds. So some of these sounds will require a more open space in our throat and some will require a more closed space. So it's good to be able to explore a way to be able to feel the different differences between the two. So if we want to know whether we've made an open space in our throat or a closed space in our throat, we can think of some different sounds. So the sound mm will mean that we're producing a closed throat. So if we say mm with our tongue to the top of the roof of our mouth, mm, then we can probably sense that everything inside has been closed off and this will give us a closed throat position. If we then think about an ah sound, we'll feel the back of our throat opening somewhat. Ah, so we've got a big space at the back, but actually we might still have a closed space down below. So, mm, we feel completely closed. Ah, we can feel a little bit more open at the back. If we want to feel a fully open throat, then the sound ah is a good one to use. So rather than ah, which is brighter, ah is a little bit more rounded and instantly you should be able to feel that there's a lot more space down at the bottom. So that's when we know we've got an open, fully open throat when we do the ah oh sound. So if you do them in order, mm, ah, ah, oh, you should really be able to feel the difference in the space. Have a play around with this and check that you can feel and sense what's going on before you move on to the next stage. Once you're happy that you can feel the difference between the different positions of mm, ah, uh, ah, uh, you can then take your hand on your larynx. As you do the different positions, hopefully you should be able to feel the difference in your position of your larynx. So when the throat is closed, you'll feel that the larynx is in a slightly higher position and when it's open, you should feel it's in a lower position. So you can literally feel your larynx moving up and down as you move from one sound to another. So try this because this is gonna be useful later on. So onto our bass drum. This, as we already said, is the most important sound that you can make in beatboxing. So it's good to spend lots of time perfecting this one. You can make lots of really good beats just using this sound alone. For instance, lots of dance music just uses this heavy bass drum sound all the way through its track to give it a really good beat. So let's work out how we can build up this sound. So first of all, let's start by saying a B. So we're just going to say B or B, B, B. Try to notice how it feels when you make that sound. So you're feeling your lips coming together and a little bit of air exploding through the lips as you say the B. But, but, but. Okay, our next stage is to take away the voice. So now we're gonna have that um, lips coming together and opening again and that little explosion of air, but we're not going to have any vocal sound. So. Play around with that until you're happy. So the next stage is to build up some pressure behind those lips so that we can really make an explosive sound and make our bass drum as big and bassy as possible. So a good tip to start off doing this is to take a nice breath through an open mouth and then bring your lips together 
and really feel that air behind the lips before you open them. So it's almost like you're trying to push the air through the lips, but you're not gonna open your lips. So you'll take a big breath and then just close your lips and feel that pressure. So then when you've got that, you can have a go at actually saying the B again, again without any voice. So take, take in that breath, let that air build, and then see if you can explode that B. So you might find that that happens, fantastic. You might find that it comes out a little bit like this. Now what's happening there is that the lips are a little bit too tight. So you need to make sure that you've actually got quite a relaxed feel around your lips. This is why it's great to warm up those muscles like we did earlier. And you're just using the air to produce the sound rather than trying to push it from your lips. Now let's go back to thinking about the open and closed throat that we explored earlier. So to help our bass drum sound, we want to see if we can use an open throat when we produce it, which will help to make the sound more resonant. So you can try your ah position again, and then check that you've got that lowered larynx. So ah. Now you can try your bass drum sound again, and see if you can keep that larynx in that low position. Hopefully you'll feel and you'll hear that that bass drum is even bigger and bassier. If you try doing the bass drum with the larynx in a higher position, then you'll get a slightly higher pitched bass drum, which is a useful sound sometimes depending on what you're trying to do. So it's worth experimenting and seeing what happens when you change the position. So a high larynx will make a kind of higher pitched sound. and a low larynx will make that big bass drum sound. Okay, so now we're gonna have a practice at our newfound bass drum sound on its own before we have a go at putting it with the flute. So you might find that you wanna do lots of practice on this before you go to your flute so that you're really comfortable in making that sound as good as it can be. I'd recommend finding a really good piece of music with a strong beat that you enjoy that you can just try out your sound with. So it can be anything. At first, you probably want to try a slower track so that you're not having to think about making that sound continuously at a fast beat. So find a steady track, and I recommend practicing the bass drum sound on beats one and three in the bar, as these are generally the stronger beats in a bar, and they're gonna allow you to have some time between the beats to breathe. So you'll make your bass drum sound and then take a breath. Now you might feel that you don't always need to breathe, but it's a good idea to try it because when we do beatboxing with our flute, we've got to get used to taking lots of smaller breaths um, because there isn't any time anywhere else to do it. So that's really different to traditional flute playing where we try and take breaths at certain points in the music. When you're flute beatboxing, you've actually got to take a breath whenever you can, normally at a really unusual p position. So try taking those little tiny breaths in between as many of the beats as you can. So let's have a go at that idea together now. Here's a nice laid back track that I found. Let's see if we can put that bass drum on beats one and three. If you don't manage to get them all, don't worry, and see if you can have a go at that breathing in between two. So here we go. After four. One, two, three, four.
Well done for trying out that bass drum sound. Let's take a look at a score that you might see in a typical beatbox flute piece. So here's our score and you'll see we've got our normal flute line at the top and then underneath there's a beatbox line. Now sometimes this is written, written with its own stave as in this example, rather like a percussion stave would look like. Sometimes the sounds are just notated underneath. And you'll see we've got some notes and some letters underneath. And it's the B which represents the bass drum. Some scores might use a P, but more commonly you'll find a B. And the B is the letter that I like to use when I'm notating um, the, drums, the bass drum sound in my uh, arrangements. Okay, so now it's time to try some sounds with our flute as well. First of all, we're going to try some what we call aeolian sounds. So these are sounds that aren't true flute sounds, but still have the essence of the note behind them. So these are great to practice when you first start flute beatboxing, because you don't need to form a full flute embouchure to be able to make them with the beatbox sound. Before we do that though, let's take a look at a score again so we can recognise this when we come across it in a beatbox flute score. So here we have a different score and this time we've got the flute part and the beatbox part notated together on the same stave as we talked about um, could happen earlier. So we have our normal flute notes and underneath we have the beatbox markings. You can see the B there for the bass drum. Now the first note would indicate that we're going to have the bass drum sound alongside the flute sound at the same time. So that would involve making the B sound and forming a full flute embouchure, which we're going to try later on. The second E, you'll notice, has an X as its note head. This is a typical thing that you find in percussion scoring. And it's this that indicates that we're going to use an aeolian sound here. So we don't have to form our full flute embouchure, we're just going to make the sound behind the note. So let's start putting some of these sounds together with our flute. So when we first start with our flute, I find it really useful to be able to keep my flute as still as possible because you're going to create a lot of movement with your mouth and any movement of the flute might hinder you being able to make a really good sound. So one trick to help this is to use your right hand on the barrel of the flute. So rather than having it in a normal right hand position, if you take your flute and put it round the barrel of your instrument, then what you'll be able to do is hold that flute really, really secure and still use your left hand to play all the notes with the left hand. So it does restrict you to just playing notes in the left hand, but that's fine when we first just want to try out some sounds. So with our right hand on the barrel of the flute, we're going to take our left hand into a normal flute position and we're going to use a B flat first of all to fit with the track. So if you use your thumb B flat to create a B flat and have your flute ready in position. So now what we're going to do is practice making our B bass drum sound but we're going to have our flute there as well. So bringing the flute up, we're thinking about that B again, making sure our larynx is as low as possible. And we can hear that there's a pitch behind our bass drum sound now. If I move my fingers and create the other pitches, you'll hear the differences. Okay, so that's our Aeolian sound. So now we're going to create a pattern using A's and B flats that's going to fit with our track that we can play over and over again. And this is what's known as a loop. So our pattern is going to consist of three A's and a B flat. And we're going to try doing these notes on beats two and four instead of one and three like we did before. So one and three will be rests, two and four we're going to do our Aeolian notes with our bass drum, three A's followed by a B flat. So after four it'll sound like this, one, two, three, four. Hopefully you can hear the difference in the sounds of the A and the B flat there. So have a try, and then when you're ready, let's try it with the track. After four. One, two, three, four.
Okay, great. So I hope you enjoyed your first go at bass drums and Aeolian sounds together. Okay, so now we're going to have a go at trying to produce full sounds with our bass drum sound. Now this is pretty difficult and you might need to practice the Aeolian sounds with the bass drum sounds for a little bit longer before you master this, but here's how to approach it. In essence, what you've got to do is produce your bass drum sound and then keep blowing once you've produced that sound and then try and form your flute embouchure. So without the flute, you can practice making your bass drum sound and then keeping the air going. You can also try with your finger underneath your chin to imagine what it would feel like to have your flute and then imagine that you're trying to direct the air onto your finger. Now you might find that there's a little bit of a gap between you making your bass drum sound and producing the air or feeling the air because your mouth has to move a little bit and that's perfectly normal. So let's try that with our flute now. So we're going to finger an A, put our flute into position, and then we're going to think about producing our bass drum sound and then blowing. Now you can hear there that I'm producing quite a strong sound and Okay, that's because I've done it a few times before. If you're not finding that strong sound, then try different things like moving your head position, um, moving your flute around a little bit, uh, checking that your head joint's all in line. So the usual things you do to try and find a good flute position. But don't worry at this stage because your mouth's got to get used to adjusting too. You would have heard there that there was a bit of a gap between me producing my B and the notes firing, just as there was when I tried without my flute. So once you've mastered that, the next job is to try and eliminate that little gap. To do that, you've just got to really think about how that air is, is coming out and make sure that it's really hitting the flute straight away after you've done your B sound. Again, this might take a little bit of time and a little bit of experimentation. <laughs> You also heard on my first sound there that I made a little bit of a crack. That's really common because it's easy to overblow when you're doing your bass drum into your flute sound. So you're going to have to try and play around to regulate your air just to work out how much you need. The other thing that's worth saying at the minute now is that you'll find that you need different amounts of air on different registers of the flute. We're just going to stick with um, this area of the flute, lower register on the left hand to start with, um, and that's because it's really the easiest. If you try venturing lower or you're venturing higher, then you'll have to regulate the air um, as you would to produce a normal flute sound. Okay, so now let's try putting that all together once more with our track. We're going to stick with the same pattern that we had before with the Aeolian sounds, but we're going to make them into full flute sounds. So you're going to do beats two and four, three A's followed by B flat, and then just keep looping that pattern. See if you can check that you're keeping your mouth as um, uh, cheeks as relaxed as possible when you do this. All the work is coming from the lips. Check that your throat is open if you can as you go and also think about that breathing. So let's give that a go. Okay, it's up to four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> you managed to make some flute sounds there alongside your bass drum sounds. Keep practicing and you'll master it in no time. So I hope you've enjoyed exploring the bass drum sound with me today. 
just by using that one sound alone, you can make some pretty awesome beats and some pretty awesome tunes. Just by mixing up the rhythms, mixing up the way that the flute part goes with the bass drum, putting some rests in there. So to help demonstrate this, I'm going to do you a short performance of a section of a study by the great Greg Patillo. This is taken from his Beatbox Flute Method Book 1, and I'll provide the links for you if you want to get in touch with Greg and get yourself a copy, because I highly recommend it. So, I'm going to play the first part of the study Rollin, which demonstrates the great sounds and the great things that you can do with the bass drum alone. So that's it. Thanks for joining me for this first look at the bass drum sound. Next time we'll be taking a look at the hi-hat sound, another really important sound in beatboxing. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Keep practicing and I'll see you soon.